NIH usually, traditionally, uh, provides the fundamental basic research that leads to proofs of concept uh, that would ultimately lead to an intervention, a product, for example, be it a diagnostic, a therapeutic, or in the case of infectious diseases, a cancer in a, in a vaccine. Industry generally does not do that fundamental basic research, with few exceptions they are much more involved in the what we call the downstream aspect of the development of a product. So NIH plays a very important role in providing the fundamental basic research that leads to the concept development that ultimately would lead to a product that industry would be better than any organization, certainly better than the federal government in making products. So it is a good synergy between NIH scientists and NIH funded scientists as and industry. Well, one of the problems with the decreased funding or even flat funding in, uh, for the NIH and its impact on biomedical research is that uh, what happens is that given biomedical research inflation, uh, a flat budget itself is really a cut. Uh, given the fact that opportunities continually arise, that it would be very important to capitalize on those opportunities, that you have a dual uh, negative effect. First of all, you can't fund as many fundamental basic research grants as you'd want. That sounds like it's something in a vacuum, just a research grant, but what you have is investigators, particularly young investigators, who would get discouraged into entering the field of biomedical research and with a flat or decreased budget, the disincentive for new people with new exciting ideas coming into the field gets very, very markedly diminished and that is a problem. In addition, there are some what we call programmatic initiatives or public health mandates that one needs to pursue, which you can't pursue because you're continually trying to have a a delicate balance between fundamental basic research and applied clinical translational research. When you have an increase in the budget, you can satisfy both needs. You can keep a robust grant portfolio of new, in some cases undifferentiated ideas, bringing in young investigators at the same time is that you can uh, pursue programmatic initiatives. Uh, with infectious diseases, it might be the development of a, uh, a universal flu vaccine or the development of a new therapeutic against a drug-resistant microbe. When you have a flat or a decreased budget, all of that gets diminished to the point that it can impede our ability to really stay ahead of the field the way we are right now. Well, I think HIV AIDS uh, and the scientific advances, particularly in the arena of therapeutics and to some extent now even prevention, are going to play a major role in decreasing the burden on the healthcare system. Because we know that if you treat an individual early in the course of the disease with the drugs that are the result of both basic biomedical research and the translation of that research into products, you can decrease the cost of taking care of a person dramatically. We know from studies from different cities, from different regions, that if you get someone well, they have a productive life. The drugs cost money, but the cost of the drugs are far, far less when you think in terms of hospitalizations and the cost it would be to take care of sick individuals. When you're talking about prevention, the research, particularly over the past couple of years, 2009, 10, and 11, on prevention of HIV research have been really quite uh, astounding, uh, particularly this issue of treatment as prevention, that if you put people on therapy, you decrease dramatically by well over 90% the likelihood that they would transmit their infection to an uninfected partner. So investment in research on prevention in the long run, as with any situation of prevention, save an extraordinary amount of money.